Good evening. The opinions and statements voiced by our guests do not necessarily reflect the opinions of this network. Enjoy the shows. You are listening to WPHM Digital Broadcasting. The best in paranormal talk radio. This is Ghost Talk with 187 PI. Sit back and prepare yourselves for an adventure into the paranormal world with host Shelly Robertson and 187 PI Research Team. Ghost Talk is broadcasting live from Ohio's most haunted jail. Learn about their ongoing research at the jail and abroad, investigation techniques, and their personal encounters. Here is your host of Ghost Talk and 187 PI founder, Shelly Robertson. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Ghost Talk Radio. With me is your host, Shelly Robertson, on this fabulous Friday night. Tonight, I will be discussing some of the most haunted places in America. So, I invite all of you, my listening friends out there, tonight to join us in chat at wbhm-db.com, where you can get on on the conversation or tell any haunting stories that you would like us to share of your own. So, first off, tonight, um, I would like to mention a shout-out to our paranormal part-time 187PI member, Bob Hopkins. He recently passed over to the other side. He was deeply into the paranormal, and he... Loved this old jail so much. I want to send my deepest condolences and sympathies out to all Bob's friends and family this evening. I know he has already missed dearly. And with that, the first place on the list has to be none other than, of course, my jail. It is located in Paulding County, Ohio. Built in 1876, and it is actually the oldest building in the county and one of the oldest in the entire state and the most haunted jail. Ohio. Um, it, there's a long history um, that surrounds the jail. There's been, you know, suspected suicide, death there. We have apparitions of a lady, the sheriff, a young girl named Audrey. But I will tell you that the spirits there are not malevolent. They are very nice. (laughs) We get along well. Um, So if you want to visit a haunted jail and not feel threatened, this is the place to come, the old Paulding County Jail in Paulding, Ohio. This next place up on the list tonight is the Northern State Mental Hospital, and it's in Cedro Woolley, Washington. Now, some of these places, they might be really well known, but a few of these places tonight you may not even ever heard of. Um, the Northern State Mental Hospital, this is actually abandoned remains of an old farm. It was once home to as many as 2,700 mental patients, one of the creepiest places in Washington. It was a self-sustaining asylum, and it ran from 1912 to 1973. It had a lumber mill, a library, a greenhouse, a bakery, canning facilities, and, of course, other amenities. Of course, you know, they did everything for themselves. Now, essentially, it's a ghost town, okay? Um, Remnants of the buildings are said to be haunted by patients who died during transorbital lobotomies. Oh, how horrific. Just 
saying what they died from. That would be horrific. Some of the buildings are still in use and off limits, but you can view the shells of others and you can view an adjacent cemetery at any time. The isolated compound is a short distance off Highway 20 there in Cedra Woolley. So if you want to visit a asylum that's really haunted, they said they've seen apparitions, disembodied voices, screams. That's the place to go in Washington. Now, this next place is, it's in Virginia, in Surrey County, and it's called Bacon's Castle, and it's adjacent to to and with the Smith's Fort Plantation, okay? Now, of course, everybody knows there's no shortage of spooky places to visit in Virginia. After all, old battlefields are some of the most haunted grounds anywhere, But, if it's actually a haunted house you're after, Bacon's Castle will be the one. It was built in 1665, folks. That is so old. It's the oldest brick home in the country, the entire country. It was um, originally home to a prosperous merchant and planter by the name of Arthur Allen. In 1676... Allen was driven from his home by followers of Nathaniel Bacon, whose uprising later became known as Bacon's Rebellion. And that's, of course, how the place got its name, Bacon's Castle. People have reported encountering disembodied voices and screams. Um, They've said that they've seen floating heads, books flying off shelves, rockers rocking, And some visitors have even reported being pushed. So, if you want to get pushed around, (laughs) I guess you visit Bacon's Castle in Virginia. Now, next, I know this next one. Many of you, I'm sure, have all heard something, if not the entire story. And there's a whole lot of history on this next one. And I'm just going to give you the smidge of it all because... There's a big story to it, and it's in Adams, Tennessee, and it's the Bell Witch Cave. And I know lots and lots of people have heard everything about the Bell Witch, so I couldn't go without mentioning because it is considered one of the most haunted places. You know, all through Tennessee, I'm sure kids grow up and they're scared of the Bell Witch and all of them daring each other to to chant the I hate the bell witch in front of a bathroom mirror to summons her spirit, right? Kind of like the movie Candyman. But in the early 19th century, Kate, the bell witch, um, well, Kate, who's known as the bell witch, she tormented the bell family in Adams, Tennessee, and she resided in a cave behind their property. Besides pinching, pulling hair, and taunting visitors with strange sounds, she repeatedly tried to choke Patriarch John Bell. This spooky cave is 490 feet long, and it's been placed on the National Historical Register. And according to tour guides there, visitors report having felt strange sensations and you know, being touched, being pushed, and some have even said they felt like they were being held down by heavy weight. So that's some of the experience that people have had at the Bell Witch Cave. So take a tour if you dare, folks. Take a tour. We're going to go on to the Biltmore Estate, and it's in Asheville, North Carolina. Now, let me tell you, you folks, look up the Biltmore Estate, and you will see the photo of it. It is amazing. Um, It's the largest private residence in the entire country, and 
of course, this large place is housing some ghosts as well. This house is 135,280 square feet. Can you wrap your brain around that? My house is like 1,850 square feet. This <laughs> My house could fit in it like, oh my gosh, a hundred times, <laughs> you know. The former vacation home. This was a former vacation home of George Washington Vanderbilt II, and it's considered one of the most haunted places in North Carolina. George himself has been seen uh, chilling in the library, and his late wife, Edith, she's been um, witness, witnesses have, have seen her wandering around. They've heard her calling out his name. And here's another strange reporting from people. A headless orange cat has been seen roaming the gardens. So, headless orange cat. Not only that, echoes of laughter and splashing water in the empty pool and disembodied voices have been heard throughout the 250 rooms. I would just love to go and see this place just to see it. The, the photos are awesome. This next place we're going to, I'm sure some people have heard about that. I think we covered this a little more extensively than what I'm going to tonight. And that is... The um, United States Military Academy in West Point, New York. Now, this academy has um, Tudor-style architecture, and it has an all-around dismal creepiness to it. And the school's reported ghost sightings uh, date back to 1972, when some cadets, they claim to have seen a ghost in some antique-looking school uniform roaming around room 4714. Now, today, that's a room that's no longer in use, all right? Other ghost stories have made their way into the school's chatter, most notably the ghost of a former superintendent, Colonel Thayer's, Irish maid, and his maid's name was Molly. Molly haunts the basement of Quarters 100, and she's been known to tussle bed covers and borrow um, people's glasses and, and moving people's possessions, so... I guess she's quite active there with straightening up the rooms. <laughs> so she thinks. Um, this next place, it, it kind of interests me just because it's, you know, kind of desolate and out in the middle of nowhere. And it's not actually a house. It's, it's something else. And it's really creepy looking and... It's called The Devil's Tree, and it's located at 181 Montana Road, Basking Ridge, New Jersey, okay? The tree silhouette alone is just screams haunted, right? It's a half-dead oak tree, and it is just looming in the middle of a, just an empty field. It has dozens of axe marks in its trunk. And there's also a gruesome history. It's purportedly a meeting place for the KKK. It's a notorious suicide site and a rumor gateway to the depths of hell. That's what some people say. The Devil's Tree is really infamous among locals and has evolved into a chilling tourist attraction, as you can imagine much like all the crybaby bridges and that sort of thing. Legend has it, there's always a legend attached to things like this, anyone who harms the tree will suffer, you know, a swift 
and violent retribution, okay? So, with that being said, it has become a tradition for, you know, gutsy teenagers across the Garden State. But here's what they, they do, the teens who come and visit the tree. They dare each other to pee on the trunk. Uh, I don't think I would want to do that. <laughs> Just in case something violent did happen, you know. <laughs> that would be bad. <laughs> and this next place is the the Fairweather Inn, and it's in Virginia City, Montana. Now, you know, if, if any of you have ever been to a hotel, I'm sure you can relate and you can imagine when there's been really loud guests next to you or more so screaming children who are throwing tantrums all day. It's a little nerving, right? Well, if you don't like that kind of thing, you steer clear of the Fayweather Inn. This alone hotel, it's in a former gold mining town, and it's said to be haunted by the ghosts of children who get into all kinds of shenanigans, right? And they're little pranksters. They'll move your luggage, turn the lights on and off, and you can hear them laughing and screaming and giggling. And it happens all hours of the day and night. And people said it's, sometimes it gets more than frightening, it gets annoying. So, <laughs> So, if you want to experience bands of uncontrollable children, the Fairweather Inn is your destination. <laughs> this next place is actually on Main Street in St. Charles, Missouri. This Main Street, it looks like a perfect setting for a Midwestern horror movie, okay? It's charming and peaceful. Main Street, USA. But it's actually haunted by dozens of spirits. The legend dates back to 1853 when the old Borromeo Cemetery was moved and a number of the graves they dug up had no bodies in them. Those spirits are rumored to haunt the shops at 700 South Main Street where objects will vanish, um, lots of mysterious cooking smells pop up, as does a disembodied, deep French-speaking voice. Well, that would be interesting. <laughs> the town is also known uh, to be the home of a haunted uh, community college, a haunted high school, and a haunted forest. So if you'd like to go to a little place that's got a whole lot of hauntings going on and you could check out, then St. Charles, Missouri would be the place for you. This next place is um, Four Paws Restaurant. And it's in St. Paul, er, Paul, Minnesota. And when we come back from this short little break, I will tell you all about this restaurant. You are listening to Ghost Talk Radio on WBHM Digital Broadcasting. You are listening to WPHM Digital Broadcasting. The best in paranormal talk radio. Several U.S. presidents are on record talking about the UFO mystery. Yeah, presidents Jimmy Carter, Ronald Reagan, both had UFO sightings of their own, but the current presidential campaign might be the first in which UFO disclosure has been championed by a major party candidate. DIA, CIA, it moves around, is operating a 
programmed to train psychic spies to spy and use their powers against Russia. John Ronson writes about this in The Men Who Stare at Goats. The first known sighting of a ghost took place right after Abraham Lincoln was assassinated uh, in the late 1860s during the administration of Ulysses Grant. Project Paperclip, Clinton releases it all in 1998. Possibly the unequal cooling of a surface. I say to you, still think it's a meteor, Professor. I don't know what to think. The uh, metal casing is definitely extraterrestrial. It's a place where UFO hunters and scientists gather to examine paranormal activity in the region. Some of the documents, this is bringing Nazi scientists into the United States to work here. So we fought against the Nazis, and it's not, this again is not a revelation. As early as 1947, 1946, we knew some of this, right? On the paranormal, will we see U.S. President Barack Obama's foreign policy go intergalactic in a quest for gold stolen by aliens? We'll tell you at least how the White House responded to claims the chief executive has been teleporting to Mars. But let's get to today's Capitol account. UFOs. Hauntings. Psychic abilities. Conspiracy, ESP, cryptozoology. There are many things that remain unexplained in the inexplicable world around us. And we're talking about them here, looking for answers on WBHM Digital Broadcasting, Birmingham, Alabama. The truth is out there. Thank you for listening to WBHM Digital Broadcasting out of Birmingham, Alabama. The time is 23 minutes after the hour. Welcome back to Ghost Talk Radio. With me is your host, Shelley Robertson, and... If you missed the first part of the show, no worries, folks. You can catch the full show archive on Spreaker, iTunes, Google Play, iHeartRadio, and actually a few others. We are anywhere you want to be, okay? And I'm talking about some of the most haunted places in America tonight. And so if you have any hauntings that you'd like us to share, you know, just go to our interactive chat at wbhm-db.com and tell us about it. <coughs> Before the break, I was talking about this place in St. Paul, Minnesota called Four Paul. Okay. Now, it occupies a 19th century Victorian house, okay, and it's just stunning and when you look at it you imagine that it's probably haunted and yes it is joseph for paul he was the original tenant okay he was quite attracted to a maid named molly and here we are again with another haunted place with a maid named molly can you believe that um so anyhow this the story goes when Joseph's wife found out about his affair, of course, Joseph cut off the relationship. Now, Molly, who was pregnant at the time, she hung herself from a third floor chandelier. And soon after that, Joseph went for a walk and he shot himself. Now, their home is a restaurant, okay? And there's all kinds of reports of flickering lights, rearranging of furniture. People experience cold chills and unexplained noises. In the house, there, there's nine dining rooms, okay? And in these dining rooms, um, when there's been, um, you know, uh, wedding parties in there, 
um, new brides have reported being touched or feel like something brushes up against them and and they assume that is Molly. Now there's been reports of Joseph in the cellar of the restaurant. So if you would like to have your wedding there and be touched by the maid, <laughs> that's where you go. The Four Paul Restaurant in St. Paul, Minnesota. Now this next place, of course, is quite interesting and there's a couple of caves in Kentucky that are haunted. And this one I'm going to talk about tonight. It's called, I believe it, Sauerkraut Cave. And it's in Louisville. All right. And it got its name because it once served as a fermenting cavern for sauerkraut. Okay. So the name speaks for itself. And the Sauerkraut Cave earned its legend because it was located beneath the Lakeland Asylum for the Insane. Now, this institution, it was marred by all kinds of accusations of overcrowding and mistreatment of the patients. You name it, the rumors were going on. Now, the cave beneath the now-raised asylum, asylum is no longer there. It's, you know, believed to have been an occasional escape route for inmates. And there's also been rumors of bodies being buried there. And the cave uh, was believed that it was being used as a discarding place for infants born in the asylum. Okay, that's horrific. Strange visions of ghostly voices and figures have been reported by many who have explored the cave. And... I wouldn't mind visiting the cave to see if I found anything. We're going to go now to the town where I live, and that's Indianapolis, Indiana. And, you know, this place I'm going to talk about, it's famous for the hauntings. And you can go there. You can you can rent it out privately for investigations. And you can also take their tours and... <clears throat> You can have other events at this place also. And it's called the Historic Hannah House. And it's on my bucket list whenever I can stay home long enough and, and make time to go into this place. Um, and they hold weddings, Civil War reenactments, corporate gatherings. And it's also haunted as ever. We're talking disembodied footsteps and voices, cold spots, weird noises, strange smells ranging from roses to rotting flesh, shadowy figures darting about, and a man in a black suit suspected to be the builder and namesake, Alexander Handa, has been seen on several occasions. But what makes this even more haunted and more interesting to visit is this house was on the Underground Railroad. And in the basement, a hidden place, um, a group of runaway slaves died there when there was a fire at the place. So a lot of activity has been found to be in the basement in that area. Sad as it may be, they were trapped and burnt. This next place, well, you might want to go there just for the vacation of it all, is Wapio Valley, and it's on the big island in Hawaii. Now, of course, you know Hawaii. It's home to the fiery luau's where island dancers welcome you with pounding drums Native chants, lays, you know, the lays they put around your neck and blazing torches. All of this stuff is awesome when those dancers are actually alive, right? Not so awesome when they're ghosts of ancient warriors marching through the islands armed to the teeth, right? But those are the night marchers 
Legendary spirits who roam the islands had an eternal march to battle. Most of the longtime locals who live there, they've got stories about encountering them, mostly in specific spots spread throughout the islands. Um, the creepiest is the Wapio Valley on the northern shore of Hawaii. That's supposed to be the creepiest area. The park has some of the most scenic lookouts in the state, you know. The pounding beats and chants of the night marchers echo especially loudly through the valley when the night marchers decide to join you for a hike. So do not be surprised if you visit and you start hearing some of those ancient ancient warriors on the island. This next place is Oakland Cemetery, and it's in Atlanta, Georgia. And I know everyone loves, at least I do anyway, loves old eerie cemeteries, especially the ones that are, you know, filled with Civil War history. This one here was built in 1850 and it's the city's oldest, largest cemetery and it's among one of the most haunted places in Georgia and it's also the home to Maynard Jackson, Bobby Jones and Margaret Mitchell among many others, okay? This cemetery includes a Confederate branch where visitors report and insist that they've seen uniformed soldiers wandering the grounds and even hanging off of trees. Now, that would be a little creepy. Some of um, the visitors to the cemetery have also reported that they've heard Confederate Army roll calls among the tombstones and there's a few that have sworn that their names have been called among the list. Now, that would be a little spooky and scary if that were true. <laughs> so, I would have to experience that for myself to know if you could actually hear the army roll call. But who knows? I mean, you know, anything is possible. And this next place is Fort Delaware. And, of course, you know... All the forts, there's there's all kinds of hauntings and stories because, you know, it was sites of just tragic and horrific events, right? Fort Delaware is in Delaware City, Delaware, of course. And Civil War prisons were particularly unpleasant to be incarcerated in back in the 1860s, Right. Uh, there was rampant gangrene, amputations, war-induced psychosis, you name it. These Civil War prisons were not a place you'd want to be. The spirits of the Confederate soldiers interned at this former Union prison are said to haunt this, this prison. And it sits a short ferry ride from Delaware City on Peach Patch Island. And I would gather that it would be an interesting place to visit. Now, we don't hear a whole lot about Alaska. Maybe it's it's because, I don't know, it's cold. A lot of people don't travel there to ghost hunt. I don't know. But there are a few haunted places in Alaska and this one that, that I'm going to tell you about is called, of course, the Alaskan Hotel. And it's in Juneau, Alaska. Um, this hotel is the state's oldest operating hotel and a very legendary ha haunted spot. The most famous ghost to roam these halls is that of a gold miner's wife who lived here while she was waiting for her husband to return. And when he didn't, she began supporting herself by working as a prostitute 
until he did return. Not exactly, you know, thrilled with her new career choice. He killed her. And now guests and staff regularly report encounters with her ghosts. Spooky, right? The next one, I'm sure everybody will have heard of this one because it's huge and it's very haunted and there's events there and I think a paracon or two here and there also are, are here and that's Eastern State Penitentiary in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. It's castle-like and the, penitentiary, the penitentiary, it took solitary confinement to new levels, folks. When it was built in 1829, you know, prisoners lived alone. They exercised alone. They ate alone. And when an inmate left his cell, a guard would cover his head with a hood so he couldn't see or be seen. Isn't that just crazy? <coughs> The prison had to abandon its solitary system due to overcrowding from 1913 until it closed in 1970. Although, you know, the forms of punishment didn't get any less severe, they um, chained uh, an inmate's tongue to his wrist. wrist. Uh, that's just one example. And, of course, thousands of visitors come to visit this place every year for its museum and its ghost tours. Reported paranormal happenings have included disembodied laughter and voices and shouting and shadowy figures and pacing and footsteps and you name it. It's been reported and it goes on at Eastern State Pen Penitentiary in Philadelphia. So if you want to visit a awesome haunted prison, go to Pennsylvania. Of course, there's several haunted pr prisons here in the United States, but, you know, I could probably just do a whole show on those. This next place we're going to go to, Hotel Monte Vista, and that's in Flagstaff, Arizona. Now, Flagstaff's Hotel Monte Vista it's, has its fair share of paranormal guests who have truly overstayed their welcome, okay? And including a long-term boarder who had a habit of hanging raw meat from the chandelier in room 210. Oh, that's disgusting. And two women who were thrown from the third floor and now attempt to asphyxiate male guests in their sleep. There's also reportedly an infant whose disturbing cries have sent staff members running upstairs from the basement. Um, it's also said that actor John Wayne, you know, way back, even stayed there once and had a paranormal hen encounter himself. So if you want to experience a vacation and have a haunted hotel stay, Flagstaff, Arizona would be your destination. <laughs> and, you know, we had, we're going to go to um, Florida. And a lot of you have heard of this place, I'm sure, but it's on the list. And it's St. Augustine Lighthouse in Florida. And, of course, it's in St. Augustine, Florida. And I'll tell you what, it's visited by nearly 225,000 people yearly. And it's well known for its ghostly visitors, right? Several tragic events occurred at the now historic site. And all those events have contributed to the alleged paranormal activity. One of the first was when the lighthouse keeper fell to his death while painting the tower. His ghost has since been spotted watching over the grounds. Another event was the horrific death of three young girls who drowned when the cart they were playing in broke and fell into the ocean. 
Today, visitors claim to hear the sounds of children playing in and around the lighthouse. And that's not surprising, right? Since that horrific accident happened. This next one you might find odd that I'm going to tell you about. Because who would ever think that a place like this could be haunted, right? Well, it's the Lincoln Park Zoo in Chicago, Illinois, right? Lions, tigers, and ghosts. <laughs> As it turns out, one of Chicago's most popular attractions is also one of its most haunted, which much more with much more than chimpanzees roaming the grounds. From the 1840s and 50s, you know, the heart of Lincoln Park, it served as the city cemetery, housing some 35,000 bodies, right? The cemetery was eventually moved due, its, due to its uh, proximity to the city's water supply, and most of the bodies, but not all of them, were moved along with it. So you can imagine... You know, if you're messing with burial grounds, that's like some bad juju, and that's an easy way to get haunted, right? The Lincoln Park Zoo is no exception to this rule, and if walking around several thousand corpses, you know, walking above them isn't creepy enough, there was this famed parapsychologist, and her name was Ursula Bielski. She once said of this area... In its current state, of course, without a doubt that it's the most active site she's ever investigated. People have reported seeing ghosts there since it opened 150 years ago. But there have been no reports of ghostly animals to date. And with that, folks, we'll be back with more Ghost Talk. You're listening to Ghost Talk Radio on WBHM. Digital Broadcasting. You are listening to WBHM Digital Broadcasting, Birmingham, Alabama. To the believer, the evidence is overwhelming. To the skeptic, there will never be enough. Hello, everyone. Join Kevin and Jennifer Malik, the host of Paraversal Universe, every Friday here on WBHM Digital Broadcasting. Also heard on WCEC FM and The Rift. Log on or tune in as they check out the mysteries found within the eight categories of the unknown and unexplained, including ghosts and haunted places aliens and UFOs, theology and mythology, cryptids and monsters, urban legends and folklore, conspiracies, metaphysics, and forbidden archaeology. Listen as Kevin and Jennifer interview the top minds in their respective fields as they share theories and information regarding these unsolved mysteries. For future show and archive information, one can find Paraversal Universe on Facebook, Twitter, and MeWe under various Paraversal Universe headings. So, for excellent talk radio about the unknown and unexplained, check out Paraversal Universe, where all paranormal perspectives apply. Brought to you by the Northern Wisconsin Paranormal Society, LTV. And produced by WBHMDB.com. Thank you for listening to WBHM Digital Broadcasting out of Birmingham, Alabama. The time is 45 minutes after the hour. Welcome back to Ghost Talk Radio. With me is your host, Shelly Robertson. And if you missed the first half of the show, no worries. You can catch us on Google Play. Spreaker, iHeartRadio, and iTunes, anywhere, oh, there's several others, anywhere you are, we're probably there. Um, tonight, I'm talking about the most haunted places, some of the most haunted places in America, of course. You know, there's 
many more, and some of them rank right up there with some of these that I'm talking about tonight, but a few of them are known, and a few of them are probably some of you haven't heard of, so that makes it for an interesting show, and you can add some of these places to your bucket list. This next place we're going to go to is the New Amsterdam Theater in New York City. And Olive Thomas, her story reads much like the plot of a Broadway musical, right? She came to Manhattan at the age of 16, and she quickly won the title, The Most Beautiful Girl in New York City. And she became a member of the legendary Ziegfeld Follies, right? So she died in 1920 at the age of 25 after swallowing mercury pills, okay? But it wasn't long before her ghostly spirit was spotted backstage at the New Amsterdam in full costume and carrying a blue pill bottle. She's since been spotted many times at the theater, almost exclusively by men and theater employees. They still bid good morning and good night to her portraits hanging backstage. So, fellas out there, if you want to see a Follies girl apparition, check out the new Amsterdam Theater in New York City. This next one, you know, is pretty popular. A lot of events take place there, and and you'll see see a lot of postings. And so, actually, you know, if you get a chance, go, because lots of events are offered here. And... It's the Moon River Brewery Comp- Brewing Company in Savannah, Georgia. All right. It's considered one of Savannah's most haunted locations. And the brewing company, it's played many roles before becoming the beer house restaurant it is today. All right. The building began as a hotel in 1821. And then it served as a hospital for yellow fever victims during the Civil War. Needless to say... That building saw a lot of death during that time, and many believe some of that energy still lingers, right? Many of the restaurant's guests have reported seeing a woman in period clothing uh, staring down from the top of the staircase. Other sightings include a taunting spirit named Toby in the basement and a spirit named Mrs. Johnson upstairs. But folks say as long as you stick to the main level, you should be able to enjoy your beer in total peace. <laughs> so when you see a, you know, an event popping up for that, you can go investigate and see what you find at the Moon River Brewing Company in Savannah, Georgia. This next place is the Pittock Mansion in Portland, Oregon, okay? Oregon pioneers Henry and Georgiana Pittock, I have a hard time with her name, they decided to build their dream house when they reached their golden years, right? So in 1909, you know, spurring the innovative design and construction of the Pittock mansion, they were set to move in and live out their golden dream years, right? Unfortunately, the couple only got to enjoy their home for a year, few years before they passed away, all right? Georgiana, she passed away in 1918, and Henry in 1919. The building is now a public landmark where some strange occurrences have been reported, such as the smell of roses, which was Georgiana's favorite flower. <coughs> and this smell has been reported filling rooms where there's no flowers at all. And a childhood painting of Henry that moves on it up on its own from spot to spot within the house. So that's kind of an odd occurrence. So clearly, death was not enough reason for the Pittocks to vacate their beloved home. So if you want to witness some moving photos, go to the mansion in Portland, Oregon. Next we have, and this state has really got a lot, a lot of 
haunted locations, I'm telling you. I have visited quite a few. And this is, I haven't been to this one, but let me tell you, there's just so many places. This next place is the Dock Street Theater, and it's in Charleston, South Carolina. Charleston has some fabulous, just fabulous houses, like the old architecture, and it's got a, their city jail is castle-like and haunted, and the cemeteries are just, some of them are just amazing, right? Well, this theater is one of the oldest theaters in America that's in Charleston, and this site is downtown, and it has racked up a lot of, you know, you know, turmoil and history over the years, you know. There was a fire that burned down the original theater, and the Planters Inn was built on the spot, and it was converted back to a theater in the 1930s, okay. The most flamboyant ghost here, they say, is Nettie Dickerson, and Nettie was a prostitute who, legend has it, was struck by lightning while standing on the balcony of the hotel. Her shadow has been reporting gliding along the second floor of the theater, crazy-eyed and dressed in a red gown, and other spirits have reportedly been spotted at the theater as well. Um, uh, Junius Brutus Booth, who was a 19th century actor, and he was also the father of Lincoln assassin John Wilkes, who used to frequent the inn. So isn't that interesting? This next place... Um, I'm sure maybe some of you have heard of it, some of, some of you haven't. And it's the Whaley House in San Diego. Thomas Whaley built this family estate in 1857, of course, in San Diego, on the first, uh, the former site of the city's first public gallows, okay? And shortly after he moved in, he reported hearing the heavy footsteps of Yankee, supposedly Jim Robinson, a drifter and a thief who was hanged on the site four years before the house was built. Whaley's family history ended up being filled with tragic deaths and suicides, many of which occurred inside the home itself. And some of the family members reportedly still haunt the landmark. Often, oftentimes, you know, people report smelling cigar smell and the, um, the smell of heavy, heavy perfume. So, and, and there's even a much larger story to the Whaley house in San Diego as well. And if you want to look that up and, and get the, the full details on that. Next place is the Myrtle's plantation in St. Francisville, Louisiana. Now this place was built in 1796 by General David Bradford. Myrtle's Plantation is considered one of America's most haunted sites. The house is rumored to be on top of an old Indian burial ground and is home to at least 12 different ghosts. Legend and ghost stories, as you can imagine, they are rampant, right? Including the tale of a former sl a slave named Chloe. This slave girl, she had her ear chopped off by her master after she was caught eavesdropping, okay? So she got a revenge, legend goes, she got a revenge by poisoning a birthday cake and killing two of the master's daughters. But she was then hung by her fellow slaves. Can you believe that? Chloe now reportedly wanders around the plantation wearing a turban to conceal her severed ear. So that would be a sight to see. Then we have this next place um, in Athens, Ohio. Okay. And it's a small town and it's home to Ohio University as well. And, you know, it was a college town. 
And there's some downright strange ghost stories that come out of here. This small and peaceful community has inspired stories of hauntings that include everything from headless train conductors to pagan cults and the violent murders of livestock, right? Many claim that when plotted on a map, get this, I'm going to have to look this up because I did it and I need you. Um, the city's five major graveyards form the symbol of a pentagram and strange rituals are at the center of many of Athens' most famous ghost, ta- ghost tales. So a lot of these stories date back to over 100 years when the town um, became associated with the spiritualist movement of the 1800s. The most famous tells of Jonathan Coons, a poor farmer who was instructed by ghosts to build a spirit room in which apparitions would then manifest and communicate with him from beyond the grave. And I guess this spirit room is still standing today, so that would be a place to visit. (laughs) And now I want to talk about a little bit real quick what's going on here at the old Paulding County Jail. We have this Saturday a public ghost hunt. So if you're interested in that, we still have a few tickets remaining. You can find us on Facebook to get your ticket at uh, by searching 187PI. Or you can get a ticket from our website, 187PI.com. And that is this Saturday. And then we have coming up on... August 11th, we have Ghost Stories Night. You can get registered for that. Same thing. Go to Facebook or go to our website, 187pi.com. Registration is free. We put this, it's a social event that we put on that helps the local dog kennel ran by the local sheriff's department. All you got to do, admission is free, just to bring um, an old bath towel or uh, dry dog food and light snacks and refreshments are provided and you get to meet us and talk with other people who also are into the paranormal field. So if you have ghost stories and nobody wants to hear them, we do. So come join us. It's for a good cause. And then on September, um, not September, August, (laughs) I'm jumping ahead. We have um, Mystical Nights coming up, Mystical Readings Night, and that's August 17th. And if you would like to have some insights to your life or you're concerned about something, you can get you a crystal ball reading, a tarot reading, or have your palm read by certified readers in their craft and you can get registered for those at facebook or at 187pi.com and um i want to thank everybody for taking time out of your busy schedule tonight to listen to this live broadcast i wish everybody a happy evening and a fantastic weekend good night everyone You are listening to WBHM Digital Broadcasting. The best in paranormal talk radio.